Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we'll be seeing few more tricks that can be performed using your Linux terminal. So first of all, let me get started with few commands that would help you to manage your ISO files. For example, in order to verify an ISO file, if there is an error or something, you can just use the command ISO VFY followed by the file name of the ISO file. ISO file. That is the, I have a file .iso on my desktop, so I'll be verifying it. Okay, no errors found. That's it. And also you can view the contents of an ISO file using the command ISO dump uh, followed by the file name. Pressing enter would be viewing all the contents which are present within the fi file. Okay. Control C to exit. Now you can generate an ISO file from a set of files that is residing inside a directory. That is pretty much easy. So I have a directory over here inside which I have some files. For example, I will be viewing it. Okay, I have these many files within the uh, Python directory. So I'll be moving back and I'll be creating an ISO file uh, followed by oh, minus O and the file 2 dot that's the output file, the directory from which you want to create the file that is the python directory okay it's been created now you can see a new iso file over here okay i have done it in my previous videos just to uh, just for those who haven't seen that video okay so moving on to the next command is to check the size of an iso file it can be done easily with iso size followed by the file dot iso which is very useful for shell scripting people so they get the size in byte okay so moving on to the next command is to monitor the amount of free space available in your system. That is can be done easily with the free command followed by minus h would be giving much more human friendly outputs. For example, they don't follow a common uh, unit for giving the measurement. For example, they don't follow bytes. Instead, they uh, make it much more human friendly. For example, instead of showing 3.8 gigabytes in bytes, they show it in gigabytes and okay. And also you can use free hyphen B for showing them in bytes and free hyphen K for showing them in kilobytes and free hyphen M for megabytes and free hyphen G for gigabytes. You can see when you use this, it won't be that precise. It's the total value of gigabytes just shows the decimal. Okay. Um, I think the human friendly way is much more useful for the common users. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next trick is the df command which is basically used for monitoring the uh, space and amount of free space available in all the file system that has present within your disk. Okay, that is the df command followed by h. h is for human friendly so it will be giving much more human friendly results and also capital T would be adding one more extra column over here you can see one extra column type which specifies what type of file system is, in, is being used by that file system. For example, it uses extended 4. Okay, now moving on to the next trick is the watch command. Watch command is pretty much useful command. When you want to execute a command repeatedly after a certain interval, you can use the watch command. The basic syntax is watch space minus n, which specifies the interval. By default, it's 2 seconds. Let me give it 3 seconds. Okay. Now followed by the command that you wanted to execute repeatedly. For example, uh, cmd and followed by the parameters or arguments for that command. Okay, uh, I will be using the date command and pressing enter would be giving uh, the date command and you can see this is the output of the date command and it will be refreshed after 3 seconds. 3, 2, 1. Again refreshed. Okay, that's it. And control C uh, to exit. Moving on to the next trick is to combine two files line by line that can be done easily with the paste command so, so for that I have two files on my desktop that is file1.txt and file2.txt okay in this I have four lines with one two three and four and in this I have four lines with a b c d and I'll be combining it line by line using the paste command followed by file2.txt okay you can give it any name I'm just using it to avoid confusion so that people won't think it's the line number it's not the line number it's basically combining it first line of the first file first line of the second file first line of uh, second line of the first file second line of the 
second part okay that's it okay i got pretty bit confused okay and that's all hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe thank you